Death be not proud. What's up, you bundles of sticks? Holy Diver here, and today we have the grand reveal of my brand new wargaming table. This is the fantasy and historical friendly wargaming table. So we're not going to be having little sissy areas of terrain like this. No, we're not going to have that at all. We're going to have big, huge, monstrous pieces. But this, this still ain't big enough. I need a BNN on this table. It's not big enough. Now we're talking. We're getting monstrous. Look at this. This thing's like the size of a of a small human. Look at, look at how much that covers. That's the size of terrain that you need in order to be fantasy friendly. Uh, a lot of terrain is driven towards 40k. It's driven towards skirmish. As a matter of fact, terrain makes or breaks a channel. Striking Scorpion is a good example of somebody who uses terrain to uh, make his channel look really, really good. Uh, you know, it, it's a very important part of the game, but it's not the most important part. As a matter of fact, uh, it used to be you would go to the train store and that's how you made your terrain. You would do uh, you would do the pink foam and everything. You would you would go to the you would go to a traditional hobby store. You would get a grass mat and uh, put it across the six x four, and then you would cut off the excess that you didn't need so that you had a six x four grass mat. As a matter of fact, some people would just use green felt. And then I at some hobby stores I've seen that green felt nailed into the goddamn table. Really, they nailed it into the table. You know so. Uh, I got the old table behind me here. Should I beat it with a sledgehammer and make a video of me beating it with a sledgehammer? I think I want to give this to a friend of mine or any friend that will take it, you know, because you uh, you could still lay this down on a piece of plywood and then just throw a mat over it or something, and that way you you have a weighted down table and everything. But terrain is an, uh, is a very important part of wargaming, and uh, having something cool to put your miniatures on has develop this uh, thing into an industry within an industry. As a matter of fact, if you uh, pick up your old trusty 7th edition Warhammer rulebook and you flip it over to 234, the, you'll, you'll find the piece of the rulebook that was written by Rick Priestley. He talks about uh, home supply or DIY, do-it-yourself store uh, terrain. You know, you can go and get terrain from uh, the train store and everything, but you know, when I mean, it's okay to have one little area of wood, you know, I guess, but, again, I mean, this is this is the kind of thing that I would allow the Wood Elf player to bring. I'm like, you can bring this. This is all you can bring. There's already three forests on this table. Fuck you. <laughs> um, a couple of things I've learned real quick is uh, if you are uh, in a smaller home, your living situation isn't quite like mine where I have an entire room that I can just dedicate to table making or I can do it out in my garage, you want to work in two by two sections. You, so you take your four by two piece of uh, particle board, you have that cut in half at the store you bought it from, Home Depot will cut that for you, and then you work it in two by two sections because that will be a lot easier for you to work than a full four by six. Another thing you didn't see me do, it, because this picks up right with the, where I left off, is when I'm done putting the sand on top of the table, you need to have uh, things to catch the excess sand in. So you want to go to the store, you want to get, uh, I don't know, uh, big huge uh, soup boxes, uh, Campbell's soup boxes, get at least four Campbell's soup boxes. You know how soup comes in that box and they put the plastic over it. When, get those boxes and put them four by four together so that when you hold up the excess, it all brushes off into there and have somebody hit the excess off the uh, board and you can collect all that sand to use it again. So that's one thing there. Another thing I forgot to uh, I forgot to put in this video is me dremeling and beveling the sides of my terrain. Uh, just real quick, what I did with my forests when I was actually done with them was I, I beveled the edges with a dremel to just make them smoother. You know, this is See how big that area is? That's at least the size of my hand, and that's how big you want your fantasy-friendly terrain to be, because I do play a lot of uh, games like Kings of War, Warhammer Fantasy, and Hail Caesar that require movement trays. And if the table was too crowded, a lot of people, a lot of newer players, didn't understand the nuances of the movement phase, and that would be very hard for them, whereas now everything, you just pick up my single model, pick up my single model, oh, but they have movement trays for 
circle models now. Thank you, GW. They've gone right back to where they started from. You need less models to meet, needing almost as many as you had when you began. Uh, you uh, basically have areas of terrain that are just like hills and everything. You want them to be the size of your hands. So big, think big dinner plate size. Uh, for your terrain pieces and everything. So I'm going to walk, this uh, video will pick up where I left off. It's going to walk you to the steps and then it's going to go to the grand reveal. So I've learned one thing that's important very quickly. You want to spread the glue with your fingers. Uh, and uh, before I reveal the other side, this is just a mistake. That's why, it's, that's why I decided to build an eight foot table this time so that I could always fuck up one panel. Now that I know what to do, I'm getting this on a lot better the way I want to, but if you spread it with the paintbrush, you get these splotches in here, which isn't a super big deal, but uh, it does give you these little, uh, that's where I fucked up and I can always put some more static grass right in there, but in areas like that, that'll be a little bit harder. As you can see, I'm using two different shades of grass. I'm using dark green, I'm using battlefield basing and uh, woodland scenics dark green. And then uh, when, when you're done, you want to get two boxes. And uh, as you can see, I've got, a, I've got a big mess over here and you want to collect them in your two boxes and you can keep using it. So. Uh, before I uh, do this one up, I'm going to dust it off with a paintbrush again. You, you want to buy at least one big, decent, professional paintbrush like this. Uh, and you never want to get this wet because this, this four inch guy, this will take forever to dry out. Th this one will just take forever to dry out. So before I begin new sections, I'm just going to dust it off again, make sure I got no static on it because there is a little bit of loose static on it. And then you want to spread that glue out by hand and uh, you'll get better results and smoother patchwork like over here. I think I did some of, uh, I, I did this, I did some of these sections by paintbrush, which isn't really bad. Isn't really that bad. So it did work. It's just that in bigger patches, you, you really want to be spreading it on with your hand because that'll make it even. So you, you use your two fingers and spread it on. But this is okay because this is the extra section, which means when I get to those two sections over there, that's going to be the uh, section I use for my six foot table. And uh, I'm not really that, that ashamed of this at all. So uh, because uh, I haven't done this in 17 years, you know, I definitely want to use more sand on the net, uh, at least on the next section and everything. So bigger patches of sand. I think what I want is a big patch like that and I, I want it to go all over and then, you know, use little canals, ca canals of uh, material. So this one, this one won't be that bad because I know enough now to spread the flock or the sta uh, to spread the static grass over with uh, my hands. So this is kind of the rough draft for my hill. I don't know if this is going to work. It turned into, uh, I should, what, what I should do is I should make my curves a lot bigger. Uh, one of the things, some of the things you're going to need when sawing these is you're going to need some quick grips. These go onto the table like that. And then the hill, the side of the hill that you're working on with the jigsaw, uh, basically goes underneath that and you clamp it to your table. Okay. Uh, again, when you're done sawing, you just sand the rough edges off. This stuff, oh, sorry. You just sand the rough edges off. This stuff saws, uh, sands up really, really nice. It's a very soft wood to work with, but these will provide the basis for your hill, of course. Then you put the foam on top of that. This is just the first one that I cut out, and uh, there are some blades that you're going to need. You're going to need high steel steel jigsaw metal blades here. These are for stone and stuff like that, fine tooth. You do not want to use a jagged one like this. Even though this is for sawing wood, it's more for like thick wood. You want to use one of these little guys right here on your jigsaw. The jigsaw that I'm using is set to full orbit. Full orbit is for soft plywoods like masonite. Uh, be careful when using the saw. Be very careful when using the saw and everything. And one of the other saws that I've got here is I have a standard Ryobi circular saw. 
and everything. This is just, you can get these in any hardware store, but I'm sure if you're a man and you don't know a single man in your entire life who doesn't have carpentry tools, well then, uh, Even you, puppy dog. Hey, you need to grow a sack. Cut it into a manageable section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I clamp this down, but I can't show you, I can't, I can't show me cutting this wood, you know. Uh, this isn't that type of video. Again, if uh, get your daddy to help you if you need your if you need help and you're really seriously uh, worried about losing a finger because I don't want anyone to lose a finger doing this kind of shit. But uh, you're gonna I'm gonna jigsaw this one up and I hopefully it's going to turn out a little bit better than that one. Everything you do is a rough draft because you can always go back and do more. I bought a piece of masonite today for, I think, $5, a two by four piece of masonite. So yeah, I, I can do this all day, every day if I have to, but I'll show you what it looks like when it's clamped down. So as you can see, it's been sawed and everything. For the most part, the bigger the curb is, the easier it is to do. I think I'm going to want big curbs. I might have to rethink the hills and the, way, and the shape that I want them and everything, but using a big hill. I like big hills because you can do little round top scenarios and everything, but like, uh, again, I went in there, I followed the line as best I could. It's never going to be perfect, and watch what the sander does. It takes off all that excess. It immediately drags all that off. So that's what you use your sander for. And uh, let's, uh, let's readjust it and go one more time. So this second one's coming along massively better than the first one. Uh, again, I could go out and buy a hill, that's fine, from uh, Battlefront, but it's not going to be exactly what I want. It's not going to be exactly what I want. It'll be functional, it'll work, but it's not going to be exactly what I want. It's not going to match my table, and this that's what I want. I, I need a new table that's going to last me for a little while, and then... Uh, as you can see, the jigsaw is just cleaning that right up there. Every now and then I get a jagged edge. I'm gonna see if I can go circle, make a curve around that. But other than that, this one's way better. And this blade here, working out way better. You can see I've got it clamped down. I'm on the last stretch here. And you will need to clamp this down or someone else is gonna have to hold the board for you, which I don't recommend. Uh, there are table jigsaws, if you got one of those, or if your grandpa has one of those, use that. He'll probably make them perfect for you every single time. And then when dealing with a bigger piece, I have to cut one away from the other. You definitely want to weight it down from one side because you can control the end of the saw. You can control this end of the saw right here by just putting your hand on it. They're very uh, liberal that way and everything. So. And if you had a, I wish I had a sawhorse, but I don't. So that's where I'm at right now. That one, eh, we're getting there. Not quite what I want. I'm gonna do some different shapes on another piece and then try that. So I did have some success by the time I got to my fourth piece. Again, you need to practice and see what works for you. Uh, the closer you bring the jigsaw in, and let, let's pretend that this is my jigsaw and I've got that black shield. I let this pass my thumb because I just guided it in for the first second. You don't want to have these sharp edges. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see out of these which has the least sharp edges and everything. I might be able to make a new shape out of this one maybe. I, I just might moon it around and have that be one of my hills, but I don't know. I'm going to try one more, one more piece today. Uh, because you, you, you got to practice. It's like anything, you got to practice. But uh, the fourth piece I'm relatively happy with because this is going to be woods. Or I might make this piece into another woods and then kind of discard the other two pieces. And then, uh, you know, so four feet of masonite to get two pieces of uh, terrain. This is why I left them big so that they would be easier to work with and everything. But I think this is going to work out just fine as a woods and a woods. And so I've got my forests. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to just try to cut one more piece for my hill. So I've done myself a favor. I've cut a new, they're roughly two by two section of 
masonite here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to chase this as best I can. I think I can get it in one go, which is good. My friend with his Dremel can uh, smooth these up a little bit. I bet you I could use a Dremel and go around the bases of these and then bevel the edges just a little bit and we'll see. So I've got a maybe pile, then I've got an acceptable pile. So I noticed that I'm getting more control and more of a mastery on the second set of panels that I'm doing. I've resorted to using this. This is something that holds paint, so when you're doing like edges, you have your paint and everything for painting. Uh, it's a Wooster Pelican, and uh, this thing's pretty badass. It'll hold your brush and everything, but I've been using this to cover an entire, look at how much area I cover when I do this. So this really helps out. I put all my Elmers on, they'll be and wherever the Elmers gets thin, that's where I'm going to put my grass and everything. So basically that's after I paint it. I've got to paint it. This will probably take two coats to make sure that everything I do stays. But I'm going to shellac this end of the table right here. This is just general areas. Uh, kind of where I want my grass and everything. Uh, when, when I paint things in, I might make them more staggered and everything. And then wherever it gets thin, let's say if I get the, uh, the spotting that I got by spreading the glue on with the paintbrush to do the static grass, uh, hopefully I get some of that and I'll be able to put the static grass in those holes. And uh, I'll show a better mastery this go around because now I have a way better idea of how I did, uh, of how to do this rather than just paint the thing brown, put huge patches of sand and then just put static grass on this. So that'll be next. So when you do get to your terrain features such as your forest flats and your hills, when, you, when it comes time to glue them together and everything, you have to weight them down so that they don't warp upwards. So as you can see, I've got quite a bit of weight on that hill I use a very dense insulation foam. Uh, then the next step here is to go around the, the rim of the hill here with Elmer's or just uh, look for, see, see how there's a gap there? You, you kind of want to seal the gap with Elmer's glue and make sure you get a little bit of Elmer's in there just to make sure it's all closed off and it's one solid piece. Kind of. So you want to see, there's, you're never going to be 100%, but you do want to get some Elmer's glue in that gap. So that's the next step. As for the forests, they are 100% ready to paint. And uh, I'm just going to bring these up here. I'm going to dust them off one more time. As you can see, this one's laying perfectly flat to the table. I already have a lot of trees. But what I would use is a three quarter inch washer, I think. And that's what I would use to weight my trees down. And that would be the base of each tree. I would I'd get six three quarter inch washers and there'd be three trees on each. Uh, you know, you don't want your forest to be too crowded, but I'll get a paintbrush and I'll just brush this off one more time. I'll get the paint, I'll uh, get the roller out and uh, the latex paint will go on this stuff. And then you'll probably do two coats. So as you can see, I took both hills and I frosted the edges with a lot of Elmer's to try to close up that gap in between the insulation foam and the board that it's on. And uh, that's just step one. Once that glue dries, you can draw your patterns and uh, decide how much sand you want to put on there. And then uh, you paint the hill. So the moment you are done painting your forest flats, you want to put the weights back on them after they've had a second to dry out and stuff like that simply because you don't want them to warp upwards so they're going to be like that for a little while they're going to dry flat which is good as you can see here i've got the fifth panel ready to go now i'm in production mode i should be able to produce one panel a month or one set of terrain whenever i feel like it and uh I'll, i've also gotten the uh third panel done. That's a uh, second generation. You can see how much better that is. What I've discovered is that you want to go all oh, what I've discovered is that you want to go all the way down with your sand first as you map out where you're going to put your sand and you want smaller patches of grass 
large patches of grass are gonna they're actually gonna peel up but uh, I I'm happy with the ones that I've made and uh, I don't see myself moving forward anytime soon to get new ones so what you do see is the progression of my work. You can see that this was the very first panel that I did. I used the paintbrush to put the uh, static grass on, kind of uh, with devastating results. And then right about here, that's where I discovered that I want to put it on by hand. Over here, uh, this is where I started putting the glue on by hand for the static grass. I got something a little bit better. And then over here, this is the third panel. Looks a lot better. I do have a couple of brush lines through it, but uh, the whole thing will fade. Now, I have another panel coming in relatively quickly that uh, that's just got its static grass. I have sealed these, and uh, I'm going to use this as is for a little while, and then I'm going to, like I said, I was starting with five. Everything that you do when it comes to this kind of project is mastered. It You learn it by trial and error. You're not going to be, no one... Uh, it's like Carl von Clausewitz said, no plan survives its first encounter with the enemy. Plans all fall apart. So, I, I really like the center one, and then I like this left one. This one kind of looks like it got in the Katrina, and then they sent it here to me. And uh, that's about it. But, let's see what it looks like with some terrain on it. So here it is with some terrain on top of it and everything, and I'm actually quite happy with it. Looks pretty good, and uh, we're just going to... Now, remember that the colors of the terrain that I make, the forests and the new hills, will match this just a little bit better. They'll match this just a little bit better. And then uh, this one ended up a little bit bright. This one kind of almost ended up with the consistency that I wanted. Uh, but other than that looks real good and uh, I can't wait until the other two panels are done so that I can kind of go back uh, what I discovered is that less is more you want little patches of grass and that looks a lot better and then uh, that's just just as how it's done and I think what I'll do is I'll use graveyard earth and codex gray instead of the orchard because this did end up a little bit brighter when I uh, when I uh, do the next generation, it'll it'll look it'll look good. I mean, this this was just I mean that looks like it was made by a kindergartner, and uh, like I said, uh, everything that I did was kind of mastered. So what you want to do is you want to bring all the sand on at once, and then you want to do that, and then do the little patches of static grass instead of big patches. So here is the final reveal. Uh, I've got the, uh, as you can see, I've got the first panel over there. This is panel number two, panel number four, and then panel number three is over here. I've got the hills done. I got the biggest, beefiest regiment. Uh, I still have to finish basing these guys, but this is a unit of my temple guard standing here for my lizard men, and you can see that they're fully on the hill I just wanted to put a very awkward unit on top of that and you can see that I couldn't do what I wanted to do with any other hill I could only do this with this hill that's why the hills are huge they're widely over exaggerated so I can place them on the hill and then if I want to I can have them halfway off the hill or uh, or something or I can put a little piece of dice out there and they can go down off of the hill my forests are huge I'm using the uh, trees that I got from Titan Terrain Studios a long ass time ago. Fucking, I hate that guy. Uh, but as you can see, these uh, these work. I would just use three quarter inch washers. Uh, I basically, you saw me paint all of the sand over the uh, over the trees. There will be a little bit of warping, but that isn't that bad. It's just a uh, it's just the bigger area you use. You have to be careful and everything. As you can see, that one just ended up a little bit better, but uh, those forest flats are fine, and as long as they're staying flat on the table, they're going to be fine as well. You've got the hill over here, again, just way bigger than my hand than it needed to be, but this is my new gaming table. I'm going to make a couple more panels. I, I do want to replace this panel, but, uh, you know, if I, if I do end up making two tables, well, they will with this panel and that panel they will be eight foot tables if I want to do two large games across two tables 
As you can see, there's the poor old table over there. It's been around there forever. It's just sitting there. Wah, wah, wah. But, you know, hey, I got a lot of use out of this table. Uh, I probably won't throw it away. Maybe a friend of mine will take it off my hands. And uh, he'll like to have it around his house or something. Or who knows? But look at that. Look at the edges on this uh, table of mine here, this old table of mine. Uh, look at how, I mean, they're just sealed up. As you can see that there's no, uh, there's no breakage across any of the edges. There is no breakage across any of the edges because you seal your wood and everything. And so I'm going, and I'm using thicker plywood, uh, but that's it. Let's get a look at these guys. I'll give you a preview of what my lizard men are going to look like. There they are with their slan mage, priest, being all lizards and everything. Uh, only one broken guy in there, but, you know, not bad. Not bad. So, there's my lizard men, and uh, there's some night goblins out there. Just wanted to have a few things on the, on the table and everything. But this is the grand reveal. Uh, I, I hope you enjoyed it. We'll come up for a summation. Well, there you have it, you big old bundles of sticks. My new gaming table, and even a preview of what my lizards are going to look like. Uh... Coming up on the channel, at some point I'm going to do a video of how I finished uh, the terrain for the Battle of Skull Pass. I am making that pass. If you watch my Hobby Ramble video, you'll see that pass being somewhat constructed. I have to figure all that out. I've got to cut the piece of masonite for that. I've got to get some, uh, some gap filler, so it's probably going to use some spackle on certain parts of that. I've got to glue everything down to that masonite, and then I've got to have my friend with his airbrush just go to town on it, then I'm probably going to wash it and then see how that wash looks and use some dry brushing techniques on that and everything and then just put it on the table so that I have a, a canyon pass that just blocks one edge of the table and, and, and you lose a foot off of your table so you're really playing on a five foot table de facto because you know you're supposed to be fighting in the canyon. There's some other ways that I figured out that I could do this which would have been way better but again special thanks to Terrainaholic and his wife Sue for the uh, styrofoam that's all cut and ridged up because that looks really cool. So uh, making terrain has been a little bit of a journey for me. It's kind of cool and uh, it's it's something that I want to do but I don't want to do it professionally. I would rather spend more time at that painting table than anything else because it's a big hassle. You have to really know what you want in order to get what in order to get the results that you need and you have to be willing to practice, practice, practice because the first draft of what you do isn't going to be exactly what you want, but since there's a tutorial out there on how to do this now, namely mine, <laughs> this guy, uh, you, you'll have a better idea of how to perfect it and you'll know what to avoid. Like you want to use your two fingers to spread the glue on, then you want to put the grass on. Another thing I forgot to say is that you need to be able to collect all the excess materials. Best way to do that is to use uh, soup boxes. So Campbell's Soup, uh, the can canned goods all come in a big bo flat box. You want to try to grab four of those from the grocery store and uh, use those to collect your excess materials and then put them back into your containers and everything for use. So uh, in any case, YouTube has many features you can use to interact with me. You can like the video, dislike the video, comment, or subscribe. But until I see you again, keep playing, keep fighting, keep making your own goddamn terrain. Make sure it's fantasy friendly terrain and stay metal my friends even you puppy dog hey you need to grow a sack